Hello and welcome to the Institute of Advanced Studies. I'm Senia Chmutina, the director of the IAS, and we're absolutely delighted to host so many of you today. Um, and welcome our two fellows, uh, Jelan de Berger and Zendili, um, I have to, Mieka. It's correct, yeah, sorry. That's beautiful yeah. presentation. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> it's finally. Welcome. It, we've been waiting for so long to, to host you at the IAS, and finally the day has come. Um, the Institute of Advanced Studies is the home, um, is the place at Latvia where we um, talk about transdisciplinary things. We have the most exciting, the most kind of impactful conversations that don't happen anywhere else on campus. And I think today will be one of those conversations. Today, we're also starting the marking or the celebrations of Nelson Mandela Day, which is, of course, happening later this week on Thursday. There will be events in Leicester. And, uh, Rob, you probably can mention it later on. Uh, so if you're free and you happen to be in Leicester, please um, join us there. Um, and now I pass over to Rob Harlan to introduce our speakers and to tell us a little bit more how we're kind of all in the dark here, really. <laughs> okay, uh, well, um, I was trying to think of a witticism to get this short introduction on. Um, and as I was trying to think of something clever, I, I saw a poster that said, um, I like it, what is it? Um, and I thought that was kind of suitable in the sense of, um, uh, you'll have all read about uh, Yolandi and uh, uh, Sandile's work and what they've been doing. Um, to give a little bit of a bit of context of the past and the present. Um, the last couple of weeks has been really great to be here and working with Zandile. We've had uh, several meetings, but a couple in particular that stand in, out in my mind is one with the computer science, the computer today from there, and also the library. And they've been so full of ideas and potential and, and sort of uh, possibilities without knowing fully what it's going to be. So it's definitely a case of liking it and not knowing exactly what it's going to be. Um, <laughs> if I go back a little bit further uh, and, and welcome um, Yolandi to her time here at, at Loughborough, she, of course, uh, was an employee here several years ago. Um, and I think the same kind of sense of her arriving here had that, had that kind of opportunistic uh, world of possibilities attached to it. Um, at the time, we were trying to promote our own research and graphic design. Um, we were on the sort of early stages of looking at graphic heritage. Um, Yolandi was one of the very first people, I think, to come and be interviewed um, in a sort of renewed sense of vigor because we'd struggled in the past to attract suitably qualified candidates. When we started to say that we were doing this research, um, we had, I think, seven PhD candidates that we interviewed. So Yolandi was very successful in a very competitive field and then arrived on day one and said, so what's this all about then? <laughs> what, what is this graphic design heritage research that you're doing? And it had that kind of, kind of same sentiment of, you know, what is, I like it, but what is it? So I hope if you if you um, take anything away today and what you've heard from Yolandi and Zandile, it will be a sense of, I like it. Um, and maybe embarking on a sort of journey with us to find out what it is exactly. So I'll, I'll say nothing more than that. Um, over to you. Okay. Uh, morning, everybody. It's really nice to see all the familiar faces again and many new faces as well. Um, it's a privilege to be back. And thank you so much to, to the AIS. It's really... A, amazing experience to be hosted and such a wonderful opportunity to come back and tell you guys what I have been busy with for the past three years. So click up. there we go. So I didn't know how to open it so I just put in a photograph. This is one of our favorite photographs and also actually the hashtag for this year's Nelson Mandela Day. It's in your hands. So research is a journey, and this is something I always say. It's sometimes a roller coaster ride, it's bumpy, it has its ups, it has its downs. And this specific project, as Rob was saying, it started with something we weren't really sure what it is and what are we going to call it. And um, it started with the reposition in graphic heritage project that was between Loughborough and China. And then from that, we got a little bit of funding to actually start to investigate um, the role of Nelson Mandela in this field that we call graphic heritage. So but Mandela placemaking through graphic heritage. And now currently uh, we're running the Named After Nelson project. Um, and I'm basically going to speak to you about the journey that this project has taken. But 
not so much about the project. I want to actually tell you how it, how it started and also the people involved, because I think often when we are in the research space, we forget that we're working with people. You're still working with people. And I always say to Rob, let's, let's work with people. I like to work in a team with nice people, because if you work in a team that works, the research is just so much more impactful and just a nice space to be in. So this project started as observation in January 2021 when I was in the UK and I was actually on the bus and I noticed the park in Leicester and that park is called Nelson Mandela Park. And my question was, why? Why is this park called Nelson Mandela Park? So what might we expect to learn about a person from visiting a place that's named after them? And that's exactly the question that arose because in Nelson Mandela Park in Leicester, I don't know whom of you ever actually just walked through that park. There's just like this signboard with some quotations and a stone with a plaque, but that's it. So Nelson Mandela offers a great um, case study to this question because there's so many places named in, uh, to his memory globally. So this is just a picture of Nelson Mandela Park. And then this is just the scope of human geography in South Africa that's named after Nelson Mandela, just to give you an idea of how many places there are worldwide. So, I mean, in the UK, there's many places. Um, I think there's a, a website that actually traces how many places, and then the Foundation's archive has a a dedicated space in it called Places, so human geography named after Nelson Mandela. And we see so many commemorations of him wherever we go in South Africa. So we looked at this field from um, and the complementary disciplines that it can entail. So yes, graphic design, um, typonymy, graphic heritage, heritage tourism, urban design, something that's not in there is place identity, place branding, place marketing, and um, other areas that's also interesting that can come in is transportation planning, urban design and planning, UX design, experience design, exhibition design, archival practice. So we're sitting with a really broad scope of interdisciplinary collaborations that can happen in this space. So this is just one of those figures. So we originally looked from the perceptual dimension and the visual dimension, but there's so many dimensions from which we can actually look at placemaking through somebody's name. This is our framework uh, that we use. We use uh, John Zazel's framework and we focus specifically on um, the, um, so we used annotated diagrams, drawings, photographs, counting when we looked at the sites and observations. So this is just the, the, the foundation of the research that we did um, and the terminology that we use. So we say, what is graphic images? It's abstract architectural designs, diagrams, graphs. Um, and we also then explore it through a trio of placemaking of means, meaning, and measurement. But I'm not the means or the meaning. I'm the measurement. That's my role in this project um, because I really like to work with people. So this is the, our original team that had the discussion. And I see Simon is smiling because these are the people that was working in the department and that actually started this conversation that everything was going to. So it's myself, Marella. She is in Brazil. I'm still friends with her. We still keep in touch and hopefully she's online because I did invite her. Rob and Alison, who was here just last week. So this is the team that started this conversation and hopefully we're coming back to that again. So we went from this team to this team. And if you just have a look at 
the amount of people and the different disciplines in it. So we have the Nelson Mandela team, and of course, Zandi is the number two. Then we have the uh, Lafour team that we expanded to include Sechao. Then seven to nine is our photographers. So number seven, Celeste McKenzie, she was the driving force behind the photography. She used her network of photographers to go into the spaces where we can't photograph. Because for instance, like Nelson Mandela Park and Mama Lodi, is, close, is a community section that you can't just enter. So we got a local photographer to go in and document that site. And um, we have our exhibition team and we have students, we have our other academic partner, and then we have NK, um, which I'll also talk a little bit about. He, he has an enterprise that focuses on human-centered design. So this is just some thoughts from the team. This is going to come out in the article that we're going to publish, an informal article on Heritage Portal. And just what, what is the team saying about their experience working in this project? So working with a team to make research more accessible uh, through more popular means and not just our normal channels in which we operate. Um, how we use mundane objects and make it interesting and make the connection there because there is value in those objects and in working in a multidisciplinary team. Okay, so for me, I'm, I'm the people person. So currently I'm the project coordinator of the Named After Nelson project. And what I found is it's very important to understand the, the needs of your diverse stakeholders because we're working with an NGO, we're working with academics, we're working with practitioners, we're working with students, we're working with lecturers, um, we're working with like-minded organizations, hopefully like, like the um, Nelson Mandela Foundation. And we're also working in a very multicultural and multidisciplinary team. And these are the soft skills that we often teach our graduates to have, but we as researchers also need them so that we can work. Because if we can work with people, we can actually do more impactful and more engaging research. Um, so the impact pathway. So what we did is we spoke to the foundation and we learned what is their need. And how can our project contribute to what their need is? So they have three impact pathways, dialogue and advocacy, memory, and Nelson Mandela International Day. So through the public exhibition that we have, we focus on the memory, and we have QR codes that links directly into the archive that's in Delhi helped us, and we brought some of the archival items into the exhibition. So these are items that the public has never seen before. So we're trying to and so we're trying to increase the hits on their website and their traffic. And we're also using um, our repository at Lafra to making all the images access free, open access. Dialogue and advocacy, we're doing workshops. We did a Freedom Day workshop with students. We did uh, we're going to do two stakeholder workshops. And then, of course, the activities related to Nelson Mandela Day, those in Leicester, but also the global campaigns that we're launching. The first is Share Your Stories, and the second one is a TikTok dance challenge. Because the foundation has the need to reach a younger audience of South Africans to keep the legacy alive, because legacy does off with generation. So how do you keep that generation alive? So this is our impact activity. So we looked at publications, so journal articles, speaking at conferences, the things that we normally do, writing research reports, briefs, and developing toolkits. We do events, public events, policy dialogues, workshops, meetings, webinars, media, we're using social media. Um, multimedia, broadcasting media, rock rocks and television. We have a radio interview tomorrow again. We had two radio interviews. So using all the channels out there and not just our normal 
channels that we use to disseminate our research. And then we have a website. We're making use of data visualization using our online networks and our people networks. So leveraging people as well. This is just an example of the exhibition that's currently on display. It's um, fully transportable, so it pulls out and it can be light flat. The files are also available online so that anybody can download it and put this exhibition on display wherever you are across the world. Also leans into sustainability, of course, then, because it's just less. This is a snapshot of the six locations that we did, that we focused on. We looked at a diverse range of human geography, um, the bridge, a theater, a park, a square, and a village that's called Mandela Village. This is just one of the archival items. A pair of sneakers. It's a mundane object, but it has value. And we put it into the context of how it contributes to honoring his legacy. This is just a workshop that we did last year. And we also involved with an event called Making Reading Fun. So this is something that the foundation does. But to our team then came on board to offer like a treasure hunt for the children where they have little questions about placemaking and Mandela's legacy. To teach children in a fun way about placemaking. And do they know about these places? They go to these places, but are they more aware of it? Um, we had a student photography workshop. We had an informal lecture at one of the schools. These are just the students. This is us just working. I'm um, normally meetings we have every week for the past 10 months, 11 months, we had a meeting. This is just the UX of last year. We do exhibition tours. We're doing the events in Leicester. And then we have this share your stories campaign that's running currently, where we're asking people, if you went to a place named after Mandela, please share your stories, please share your photographs, mm -hmm. because it helps us to extend our reach um, and the foundation's reach. So feeding back into the archive of places named after Mandela, how does it look, what's happening there, and what are the stories? And I have a little video, but I'm not going to share it because I'm going to run out of time. Display at the foundation. So we just change it and it's all over social media. Um, but it's hashtag share your stories. And then this is the dance moves for the Mediba dance TikTok challenge, which is also um, uh, we were using TikTok marketing strategies to get it out. And then um, the intern actually puts also, we have an intern that focus on this. Just quickly, access to resources. We have a dedicated section on the Named After Nelson website that's focused on just resources, things that's open access that you can use to, to, um, to further. So we have the Nelson Mandela campaign. We have the exhibition panels. We have uh, presentations, toolkits, all of that comes there. Then we have on Fixshare the named after Nelson division, where all the photos are high quality, high res photos are available to download. Lara Skelly is helping us to do, she did this just as a pet project, but a data visualization of where are those things that we are uploading to the archive from where are they being downloaded in the world and used. And this is our future. So we're looking at a new focus maybe on urban practice with a cutting city region observatory for which we received a small pot of funding to have a collaboration with them. Extension of the name of the Nelson project with the Nelson Mandela Children's Hospital. Um, we're also looking at the avenues of storytelling and a sport research agenda. And that's it. Thank you. I'm going to put over to Dandy and then we can maybe do questions together at the end.
It is online. Uh, thank you so much, everyone. Um, my name is Zambile Mirega, and I'm so happy to be here. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Um, so I am a, I'm a, I'm a residential fellow here at Lafar University, and I'm going to share with you the, the context behind the Nelson Mandela Foundation. So the foundation started in 1999. It was founded by Nelson Mandela himself um, as his post-presidential office. So when he retired from presidency of South Africa, Madiba started the foundation. So he started at his house in 13th Avenue with probably two employees or two staff members, if not one, and then the work grew. And then in 2004, the foundation transitioned into an organization that's focused on memory, um, dialogue and legacy work with three pathways, with, which are the core programs. Um, the the mm -hmm. dialogue and advocacy work, which is the archive and research department, the Nelson Mandela International Day and archive. So the dialogue and advocacy work is where we address critical social um, issues. We, uh, the foundation invites um, statesmen and you know policymakers around the world who would come and address those social issues. For instance, climate change, um, gender-based violence. You know, you can think of you know more world problems. So we had Oprah Winfrey, uh, who came uh, alongside Mama Krasha Michelle um, and others. Uh, on Isitun Zalafazi, which means uh, women's dignity. So it has a dialogue against gender-based violence. And then other examples include the latest one that we had, the Shabbat for Palestine, uh, which are the Jews who lives in Johannesburg, you know, a movement against um, the, the free Palestine, you know, the ones that's currently happening, people dying and all that. Um, and then we have the early childhood development as part of the dialogue and advocacy work. We focus on early childhood development centers, uh, we register them around South Africa and we make sure that, you know, that uh, in, in industry is a fit one for, for children. And then we also focus on many, many other, you know, dialogues that we host. So these are just a few. You can go to our website to explore more. International Nelson Mandela Day. So it's also one of my diverse initiatives. And then it's, it's, it's also a huge program. So this is only a few. A few. So the current one that's coming is Nelson Mandela Day on the twentieth, on the on the on the twentieth of July. So there'll be a a walk and run in Houghton, Johannesburg. So everyone is in, encouraged, you know, to join, even if you're not in Joburg or in South Africa. So you can just, you know, hashtag. You, know, you can do it virtually. Take a photo of yourself and put on a hashtag because there is a hashtag that you can put online. Uh, hashtag Mandela Day 2024. Hashtag is in your hands. So yes, please do participate and make Madiba's legacy live on. And then you can also join us, as Yolani mentioned earlier in a presentation, we'll be in Leicester for three activities and three events. Please also take along. We also do a uh, sanitary towels handover to schools because you can't, you know, uh, have girl children missing school because of, you know, they don't have sanitary towels. So that's one of the initiatives as well. The Mandela Day initiatives. So the archive and research, um, our mandate is to create and establish, you know, and protect the legacy of Nelson Mandela. So we are the gatekeepers of his legacy. We protect his copyright, his IP, and you know everything that has to do with Madiba's legacy. And we are also mandated to generate an integrated and dynamic information resource, you know, on the life and times of Nelson Mandela and to take um, undertake research and analysis that's required you know, to support the foundation's work. So not only the foundation's work, but work of the researchers and many other you know, related institutions. So in 2004, the foundation uh, went through a, comprehens a comprehensive uh, refurbishment, which uh, included the permanent exhibition space that also have Madiba's post-presidential office, where Madiba would come to the office and work and you know, sit down and meet you know, policymakers and you know, other statesmen. So the office is exactly as it is, you know, as it was since he left it. Um, okay, slow down, Sandy. 
Yes. So part of the archival work, we do temporary exhibitions. Uh, we've had Unthreading Mandela, which is one of the temporary exhibition spaces that it occupied. So it stays for a duration of six months. So we also had Negotiating Democracy exhibition. We also had um, Infinity to the Power of Women. We also have the traveling exhibition, which is in Brazil, the one uh, below. And then uh, next door is the name Dr. Nelson. So this space changes over time. When it comes to the foundation, it won't look as you know when you visit people. <laughs> so these are quite a few examples. So the Nelson Mandela uh, archive is fragmented and is scattered all over the world. So it's impossible to collect everything at the foundation and to keep everything at the foundation. So we make sure that um, we made a decision that at least if we know where it is, we know where it's located, if it's well taken care of, and then that's it. Mm -hmm. And then we do, so there's a big part there, you know, because we do collect something that doesn't have a home or something that's donated to the foundation that is related to life in terms of Nelson Mandela. So, yeah. And then our core holdings um, includes Nelson Mandela's personal papers, um, Matiba's gifts and awards, his presidential records. So those are the gifts that or awards that he received while he was in prison, while he was out of prison during presidency and, you know, retirement. We have the 4664 collection. Anyone can tell me what 4664 stands for? I have a chocolate. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's prisoners. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Okay, so it's uh, it's Madiba's prison uh, number when he was arrested in Robben Island. It stands for prisoner number 466 of 1964. Wow. So that's how we got that prison number. So we also have that collection at the foundation. It's digitized, it's preserved, uh, it can be accessible online. Uh, we also have the Mama Winnie Matigizela Mandela's collection, uh, which is temporarily available now with us because we're processing it once it's done and then it's going to go to you know another archival repository. Uh, and then we have the Jay Scarvel collection. Um, yeah. And records of the NMF, you know, separate from the Mandela's archive. So Nelson Mandela Foundation's activities and events. So documenting Nelson Mandela. So the, all of these are the databases that are accessible online. So you have the photographs collection, you have the bibliography, the books published uh, under Nelson Mandela or related to Madiba, filmography, documentaries, you know, films and all that, the anti-apartheid movement archive. Um, audiovisual archive and speeches and, and codes. So if you want to use a code, you know, for a book, you must come to us, you must double check if it's Madiba's code, because we do have this very famous code, you know, that it always seems impossible until it's done. I also love it and I use it quite a lot, but it's not, we can't say it's Madiba's because we don't, we can't track it. You know, when Madiba said it, was it an interview? Was it, you know, a, a speech somewhere? So we can't really say it's Madiba's, you know, so we also do fact checking in terms of Madiba's quotes because we have to know when did Madiba say something that, you know, people say he said it, so. So the Nelson Mandela Foundation's digital program was made possible by a generous uh, donation or from Google Grant. So for more information, you can go on YouTube. It's available there if you want to learn more how you know you manage to get a grant and the processes and stuff. Sure, I'm running out of time, so sad. <laughs> Uh, key considerations after getting the grant. So we're more concerned about the intellectual control because once you digitize, uh, it's not easy, you know, to safeguard and you know the digital copy is easy for it to be manipulated, to be misused, and to be shared. You know, so we had those intellectual control considerations. Archival key functions that must be in place. So we make sure that at least now we have the funding to, to actually you know, do the sorting and arranging and description. So we're also considering all of those. I'm not gonna go through that now. And then we face challenges. Huh. Various solutions for different types of formats. So managing a digital archive is different from a physical archive. So it comes in you know, different types of formats and the solutions are also broader. So that was a challenge, you know, choosing one solution for all those various uh, formats. Recording from analog to digital, you know, uh, digital archives and storage, those are those were also the challenges. So we came into a, a, um, 
a, a, a solution, you know, that, okay, why not uh, make the Nelson Mandela archive a multi-layered portal, you know, for all the different types of formats, you know, it's gonna be hierarchical, but it's gonna include all the different formats. And then yeah, we, we bought storage, uh, we opted to go for open source instead of the proprietary information system to avoid licensing and because we wanted to be in full control of the archive. So this is the Atom digital uh, cataloging system. And then we also use Archive Metica for long-term digital preservation. Uh, so once the process is done, the ingest is done, so it should look like this. So these are the digital images embedded into the archival description. I'm not gonna go into detail demonstrating, but this is just the end result of how it looks like. Public programming. So this is one of my diverse codes. The joy of reading is one that I have treasured all my life, and it is one I wish for all South Africans. So this is the uh, Making Reading Fun program. You already mentioned that we did some work with the team. This is Madiba and one of his great grand uh, sons. The Open Saturdays, the foundation is open on Saturdays, free of entry. Uh, please, uh, people are welcome online. Please do come and you know, spread the word. It's open for visitors. So people are like, how many are you in the archive? You know, you've done all of this, the exhibitions that, you know, what's who, who's there, what's the team? So on, this is Zandile, the first one. Uh, she looks familiar, I think I know her, okay. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, we have uh, an audio visual and digitization archivist, number two, we have number three, the archivist who does the processing of the, you know, papers, the physical papers. And then we have the researcher who also coordinates exhibitions. We have our head of department, Raja Saleh, who's my boss. And then at the far end, we have an intern. She was with us in 2023. So I wanted to show you an augmented reality tour of the foundation, which was made possible by a collaboration uh, by myself and colleagues from the UJ library. So we, so we, we, we worked together in putting this for all of you, but I'm like time. <laughs> so I, I I tested if it's working, it's working, and then I saw that it's working. But then I wanted to experience it, you know, together with you because I've been used it before. So it's 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 giving you like um, a tour, an augmented reality tour of the foundation. So you can actually navigate and see how the foundation looks like when you enter at the entrance. So this is our reception area. Uh, there is our, this is our temporary exhibition space, which has the name after Nelson exhibition. So people will be like, so where do you guys get funding, the donations? We have a donor wall here. So you can see who donates money to the foundation. So it's categorized into legacy championship and legacy partners. So you can easily, you know, have a look. You can go straight to the permanent exhibition space. Um, and see the curated uh, permanent exhibition from my diva's bed, you know, coming to Johannesburg, being a lawyer. Um, and then we also have a replica of the Nelson Mandela uh, cell in Robben Island, because not everyone can afford, you know, to go to Cape Town and actually, so it exactly the same size as the flat, the, 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 the cell in Robben Island. So we do get school kids who come in like, oh, wow, so it was this small. Oh, wow. You know, so at least it's inclusive. So the exhibition also have braille, the yes, and it also have uh, the the audio. You can just click here and listen. You know, if you don't want to read or yeah, so it's very inclusive. So this telephone here, it has Nelson Mandela's. It, it has uh, messages from children around the world when Madiba passed away. So they would call and leave condolences messages. So you just pick it up and you listen to it and then you can you know, listen to them uh, in different languages. So we have a movie room. Uh, it's here. So you can just sit and enjoy a video of the life and times of Nelson Mandela. And then we can go to Nelson Mandela's office. So here, yeah, there's um, a reading room for our visitors, the researchers who come, you know, and sit and, and go through our archival materials. So this is a test your knowledge uh, quiz. It's off, but then it's very nice when you're at the foundation because you can really test your knowledge, how well you know Mandela. You know, it's, it's a quiz, it's a very nice one. So this is my diva's office. 
So what's nice about an augmented reality? People know this space from this standpoint, yeah. You know, but then now that it feels as though you are inside the office, you know, because you see many, many corners that you wouldn't see when you are standing, you know, beyond that wall. So yeah, I'm gonna stop here as much as I would like to continue. But yeah, this is one of the collaborations um, that I had with the colleagues from UJ Library. And it's very special to me because as NGOs, we don't really have capacities, you know, and you know, the equipment and you know, to experience to, to actually implement all these technologies as much as we want to get the archives to the people. So yeah, and it was motivated uh, and inspired by this project. Uh, they named after Nelson, you know, learning from places uh, named after Nelson Mandela because we are documenting a colleague of mine and myself. We are documenting the 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 process that inspired the Nelson Mandela Foundation's building, the the structure of the building, the logo. You know, why is it built like this? So I had to raise all those questions because that's that's where I learned about graphic heritage. So I'm like, okay, so there are places named after Mandela. So what about the foundation? Is there anything that inspired how the foundation is built? Why the veranda? Because if you look at our building, it has the verandas like all around. Why the verandas? It has a pond. Why the, the pond is, you know, why? So I started asking all those questions. I'm like, why, why, why? So fortunately enough, I, I sat down with a colleague uh, who was involved with the architectures. So it's we all, we're gonna document all those um, key important questions and make them available. So I hope to embed, you know, all that, um, the, out, the, the feedback and all that information into this augmented reality so that people can see what's okay. So why the pond? So I'm gonna just give you one, you know, nice answer. So why the, the pond? Uh, so the pond is there because uh, it represents the river that used to flow outside Nelson Mandela's hut. Uh, in the rural areas in the Eastern Cape. So it represents that. So why the foundation has two wings, you know, the archive, and so it's built like that. Why that? So it's also explained in that document that I'm currently working on. So please look forward to it. I hope to name it uh, Learning from Places Named After Mandela, the graphic <laughs> irritation. <laughs> yeah, so I'm also enjoying it. Mm -hmm. So I was going to show you all of that, but it's okay. It's coming. You'll, you'll see once it's embedded. So yes, um, exploring the Nelson Mandela Sense of Memory Archive as a collaborative link with institutional repositories, design inquiry, and transformation, tran social transformation, which is, you know, why I'm here. <laughs> Actually, how did we get here? So we started as, you know, a, an archival query that you'll understand, as you can see the dates here. It was the 5th, uh, 15th of March in 2021. I'm just minding my archival problems and stresses. And then I see an email. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I'm like, okay, let me read it. What is it? From a distance, I'm like, ah, this is the triplet database. Because you know, the, the busiest database at the foundation is the photograph, you know, because there are commemorations, you know, there are books, publications, but this one, I'm like, Okay, tribute. Okay, let's see. I think I like it. But what is it? What is it? I like it, but what is it? You know, I started reading it. I'm like, okay. Yeah, graphic. There's a lot of graphic. There's a lot of her I know graphic alone and heritage alone, but combined graphic heritage. Hmm. Interesting. So I replied to Alandi, thank you, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> you know, I'm excited. I haven't told anyone in the team, but I'm already having ideas. <laughs> okay, so yeah. That's how we got here, you know. Fast forward, the birth of the name Dr. Nelson exhibition. I didn't know anything about graphic heritage. That's why I even learned that there's a link, a huge link between our professions, archival practices, graphic heritage, and then is you know, urbanization and so forth. Yeah. So now I liked the project, but then I, you know, I was so excited. And then I also forgot that there are other parties that must be involved. The IEP and governance team, you know, my HOD has to approve. So yeah, the foundation has this criteria. You write to the foundation, uh, we do an internal uh, review of your, of your inquiry, and then we look for three things. Commercial intention, do you want to get rich? Do you want to sell drugs in the name of Madiba? Is it in line with Madiba's values? What are, you know, what are your 
in sentence actually Madiba's values you know it must be in line with Madiba's values is for education is it for sports uh, a just society so we look for all those things uh, if permission is granted code of conduct must be followed so fortunately that's why we are here because we, we ticked all those boxes all, all those boxes huh. so now I am here and I have you know explored how the I call it the Ugoa Urban Graphic Object Archive uh, Repository and our archive at the Nelson Mandela Center of Memory. How they have, you know, how these two institutional repositories have leveraged digital technologies, you know, for ease of access, um, for best uh, archival practices. So, number one, digital uh, preservation and digitization. It has been evident that if it wasn't for these two, we wouldn't be here. So we have the digital archive, we have the links from the, the, the QR codes from the name Dr. Nelson, which takes us you know, to the digital archive of the foundation, which also takes us to the spaces that are named after Nelson Mandela. So we have the design inquiry. So I had to make at least bullet points so that I don't actually uh, leave anything out. Storytelling uh, is what I've, I, I've evidenced and noticed, you know, between these two uh, institutional repositories. So I hope to embed the artificial intelligence feature in the named after Nelson uh, exhibition once it gets here, because it's gonna travel after the Nelson Mandela Foundation's time frame. I hope once it gets here that we will work together with the computer science you know, department in embedding the artificial intelligence, the chat box into the exhibition. Collaborative projects. Um, I think a collabor collaborative projects are a strong tool, you know, to, to achieve uh, archival best practices, access, you know, and take the archive to the people. So uh, I, during this, you know, this entire journey and my stay here, I've uh, seen archival professionals, you know, design researchers, creative industries, you know, and archival resources and how we gather together to enhance a deeper understanding of placemaking in the, in the name of Nelson Mandela. So collaborative projects, I hope that um, this continues and it doesn't end here. Seeing Nelson Mandela Foundation and Lafar University, you know, collaborating even uh, further. Um, seeing the UJ library, you know, on board, because we do need support from uh, academic institutions. Um, I also hope to, see how the collaboration with the Department of Computer Sciences, uh, Dr. Firat and the team in terms of AI, how it's gonna, where that's gonna take us. I'm so excited. My boss doesn't know about it. I don't know if she's <laughs> online, please. <laughs> um, so yes, this is the process that I mentioned that I am working on with a colleague documenting the processes, you know, of the architectural behind the Nelson Mandela building and the structure and all that. I hope it also goes well. User-centered design, which is a huge important component because without considering this, then whatever that we do, when we're doing it for ourselves and not for the users. So it's very important. Uh, with the computer science uh, team regarding AI, we spoke about how um, including AI into the archival practice, like the named after Nelson Mandela project. We have the, the exhibition, the, the the Making Reading Fun at the Foundation. And kids were totally confused what graphic heritage means. Like I was, you know, when I heard about it. They were confused, what is memory? You know, what is dialogue? What is, you know, yes, we, you're telling us about things that are named after Mandela, but what is that? So you can imagine if a child can ask, um, can talk to a chatbot and ask, you know, hello, Mandela, what is your graphic heritage? Mandela will answer, yes, this is a shirt, you know, it represents blah, 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 blah. So at least it's inclusive in terms of age, you know, in terms of language, because we also limited in terms of, you know, translating to different languages. So I hope that artificial intelligence will help into that. Um, so our Atom instance is very complex for just general users. We know that it's very easy to use for researchers and scholars, but then we also embedded a video that you can, it's a YouTube video that you can just, you know, watch before actually navigating through the system. So it, it tells you how to, you know, how to find things, you know, before you actually use it. So that's how far we are trying to make it easily, excuse me, accessible and usable. Transformative um, impact. 
So this is what uh, we hope for, to eradicate false narratives to, you know, throughout this process. Um, that's why we preserve our heritage at the end of the day, because you know there are a lot of false narratives. We had a lot of young people in South Africa saying Madiba is a sellout. You know, the real Madiba died in prison. This is what Madiba. We have never heard him, you know, speaking in his home language. So that's where we go back to the archive and then we extract, you know, all those archival materials and then, you know, so that's how we we actually um, add value and you know transformation transformative impact. Social inclusion during the named after Nelson um, field work, colleagues who went to the field, we saw that uh, you know being a very valuable part of the of the entire process because hearing people who live you know in those spaces, uh, you know voicing out how they feel about the spaces being how they are or why they are named after people like the Nelson Mandela Bridge, very dangerous. You can never ever think about working there alone especially at night, you know, it's a nice bridge online, you know, in the photos, but I know I've been, you know, walking through the bridge, but it's very, so hearing, you know, those voices of communities, speaking about being, you know, in the actual spaces. Um, so there's a toolkit, uh, a um, graphic heritage toolkit that Lafayette University researchers and they're named after Nelson uh, Mandela uh, exhibition, Sima out. Uh, and the Nelson Mandela Foundation working on a graphic mm -hmm. heritage toolkit. And we as the foundation hope to be pioneers, you know, of the toolkit, because we are the foundation and we are the voice of Nelson Mandela. Imagine other institutions or like-minded institutions who don't have the capacity, you know, the IP and intellectual property and governance department who safeguard, you know, that legacy. So we hope the toolkit will actually, you know, help other like-minded institutions who have limited resources. So in conclusion, who at the end of the day, I would like to see, uh, or at the end of the fellowship, or at the end you know, of everything, I would like to see the Urban Graphic Objects Archive embedded to the Loughborough University's Atom Instance, um, and the Loughborough University Atom Instance embedded into our Nelson Mandela Archive at the Sense of Memory Repository by adding it into the archival institution, because that's how we create, you know, this in this relationship. So that's what I aim to do. Um, yes, so in a nutshell, academic institutions must please come to the party and support the work of the foundations. Uh, <laughs> yes, uh, unboxing the, the archive, please. We need to do that. We need to to find ways to, to digitize, you know, the artifacts, because they're in the vault, inaccessible, not digitized, not, you know, available or visible online. So please, we do need that. Um, yeah, I hope uh, we will engage with Firat and, you know, his department. I, do we still have time so that he can, nothing? Yeah, so it's gone. We, we brought that to an end, but we want to take questions, so. <laughs> okay. Let's... There will be time to talk afterwards. So. Okay, yes. So thank you so much, everyone, for you know for engaging and listening. And I hope uh it all goes well with the collaborations. And I hope to share you know the, the results uh, with all of you everywhere so that you can see how we've how long we've come with all the ideas and 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 yeah and implementations references to uh, institutional repositories that are, are linked. Thank you.